The biggest mistake I made in my business was not hiring a professional to help me with my money. Not just my taxes, but the actual plan I had for my business. I was completely lost on how to handle taxes, what to do with profit, and how to maintain my income. I had to find a better way. That's when I found Core Financial. Core Financial is a team of tax professionals that actually care about building real relationships with their clients. They run my books, keep me up to date with my finances, and make sure I'm taking full advantage of all of my tax benefits. Are you struggling with your finances? Look no further. Core Financial is a brand that is nationwide that can help you with your business. Both Nick and I are huge fans of Core and they can help you too. Check out howtofilmweddings.com core to schedule a consultation today. Core Financial, real relationships, no surprises. Hello and welcome to How to Film Weddings. My name is John Bunn. Today I'm joined by my good friend, Mr. Nick Miller. But first, I want to tell you we have an incredible guest on today, an incredible. author. Yes, Mike McCollowicz, the author of Profit First. You may have heard of him. We got to talk to him. He's got a new book out called Fix This Next. Nick, I'm pumped. That was such a great conversation. How are you? What'd you think? Dude, I, I am really good. I am very enlightened and encouraged after our conversation with Mike. He uh, He's one of those guys that you can just tell that he practices what he preaches. And he's written a book all about you know money and taking your profit first. And if you have not picked up the book Profit First, stop what you're doing. Go buy it right now. Um, it, 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 it's something that can definitely change your business, um, when it comes to money and being profitable and, and that sort of stuff. And we, um, asked him all sorts of questions about his books and, and what he's doing, his new book, fix this next, you know, it's basically the idea is so many of us, um, are just putting out small little fires and aren't working on maybe the stuff that we should be working on. We're working on stuff that's um, presents itself as it needs to be done right now. And he just presents this and he has a, a little test that you can take at fixitnext.com, I believe was a website where you can you can go there and you can take this little test and it will tell you where in your business you need to work. And then you should buy his book there, Fix This Next, because it's, it's, it's going to help you figure those things out. So he has so, yeah. so much great stuff to say. John and I were like, man, this Taking is, notes this is incredible. Here. Yeah, incredible. Yeah. The energy the guy brings, you know, like whenever Nick told me about Profit First, I, I, I bought it, started reading it. I posted it in the groups. You know, whenever we do po post, hey, what books are you reading? His books always seem to pop up. And, um, you know, we had a connection. We got got him on the show and just being able to hear and, and interact with him about how he's doing, what he's doing. The whole fix this next premise, like Nick was saying, is I, you know, he was saying, uh, and we'll talk about it in the episode, of course, but just the idea that you need to figure out what's the most important thing in your business right now to work on, not what's the most on fire or what you deem the most important, but there is one thing that you should be working on right now, and he helps you to determine that. We get into that. We get into all kinds of questions about, you know, um, business owners and small business owners. And we, we ask him questions regarding wedding videography, what you can be doing now. My mind's blown. It was a great interview. So I'm super pumped about it. Anything you want to add before we jump in? Dude, I, I don't think so. I think that all our listeners are just pumped and ready to hear what Mike has to say. So let's uh, let's just jump in. Let's go. All right. Well, thank you so much, Mike, for being on the show. We're both big fans. Why don't you say hello to How to Film Weddings and just introduce yourself? Well, John and Nick, thank you for having me. Everyone else in the audience uh, should be watching. A big hello to you. Uh, and thanks for joining us. I'm, I'm pumped to be talking about this market. A lot of demand. And actually, with the, with this COVID situation going on, uh, I think there's great opportunity. Um, yeah. You know, people are going to need to or want to remember the big day in a whole new way because maybe it's a big week or I don't know I think weddings are changing I have a <clears throat> relative going through a, a wedding planning right now um and just oh, a little context on me because you said introduce myself yeah yeah I'm Mike <laughs> I'm an author guy uh I, I've written books um for small business on profitability it's called profit first is my most popular and uh, my newest books fix this next clockwork um that's what I do I'm, I'm an author for small yeah. business owners. and a very cool author at that not your you know <laughs> like 
I follow you on, you know, social, different things like that. Very relatable, cool guy. I was reading your book and, uh, you know, tell, Nick told me about your book. I was reading it. We're posting about it in our group. And it was just like, Thank you. what if we see if we can get Mike on the podcast? And here you are. Like, Yeah, I'm like, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. I appreciate you guys doing this. And thanks for reading the book. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah we've great. been we've been big fans of you, but you know, I think you just told that you've been big fans of us from for a long time. Yes, you know? right, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Official, exactly. Official announcement sponsorship of the podcast from Mike. I heard it right. <laughs> right. <there>. right. <laughs> um, so let's let's jump in. I want to talk. I know you've got limited time today, but so we've got wedding filmmakers listening. Our whole world has changed with being small business owners. Luckily, I've taken into practice you know, the, the multiple accounts, the different things from Profit First. And we're going to put links in the description for all your books, of course. But you've got a new book coming out. I want to talk about that and jump into just what that book is. Does that relate to us as wedding filmmakers? Kind of give us the pitch on what is the book? What what are you working on now with that? Yeah, so the the, the newest book I just released was is, is Fix This Next. And the thesis is that the biggest challenge business owners face is knowing what their biggest challenge is. Mm -hmm. the, the argument is, I bet you filmmakers uh, experience this, it's about putting out fires, right? So you, your, your plan or vision for the day, the big thing you're gonna get done uh, today or, or for the life of your business, the big vision for the business. But what happens is all these apparent things present themselves through email, questions at your door. Um, there's a constant stream of things we can address. And there's a popular, I guess, established axiom if that's right use of that word in that we are told entrepreneurs rush to the urgent and ignore the impactful or the important and i actually uh take pause to that i, I don't think we rush to the urgent i think we rush to the apparent and there's a subtle but important difference hmm. apparent right now any of us nick john you could hop on an email and there's 50 things you could do right now me too and the next thing we see the next apparent thing we see we put urgency on it we say oh my gosh i gotta get this done and we bang it out. And then the next apparent thing. So we don't rush to the urgent. We actually rush to the apparent, apply urgency to it, say this is important. And as a result, we ignore the impactful and the important. So in Fix This Next, what I did was develop a very simple tool that gets past that clutter of apparent and gets you to what the business needs from you. Just like if, if we were holding a chain, John, say you and I are pulling a chain as hard as we can, and, and Nick is reffing it, and we're pulling as hard as we can, and the goal of this game is to break this chain at a certain spot. No matter what we do, it'll always break the same spot, which is the weakest link. You know, you can give me some slack, and I can pull it hard and change things around. It doesn't matter what we do, there's always the weakest link, and that's always going to be the breakage point. Therefore, if we want to improve the strength of the chain, we only have to fix one thing. Fix the weakest link. If you improve that, the entire strength of the entire chain gets amplified. But what we're doing illustratively here as entrepreneurs is we're trying to strengthen rando chains links. It's like, oh, <laughs> fix this one, improve that, make that stronger. So and true. The, the business keeps snapping. Like, what's wrong? Why isn't the business improving? Because there can only be one vital need in the business. Fix this next, find it for you. You, you pinpoint it, you strengthen that one link the entire chain improves, and then you look for the next now weakest link. Yeah, that's, I hope you're that's, taking that's notes really out good. there. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's really good. One thing that I appreciate about you when I was reading through Profit First, and now it sounds like you've done a very similar thing with with this book, Fix It Next, is um, you're you're taking a practical approach. Like you're not just spitting out, you know, um, inspiring stories and you know things that you have done in your life, but you're saying, you're saying, Hey, here is the thing that I want you to do here. You yeah. know, I want you to set up these accounts. I want you to figure out, you know, uh, the percentages that need to go into these different accounts. I here's find that weakest thing and fix that next. And I really appreciate that because I've read so many books that inspire me, but also made me feel like crap because I just said, okay, I need to go do all of this stuff and I don't know where to start. Yeah. Yeah. I get stuck there too. And that's why I write the way I do because I, I really need it broken down to such a simple level. Um, I, I struggle to understand hard concepts. So like with Profit First, my accountant like was jamming it down my throat. He's like, you got to read your cash flow statement. You really got to master that to know cash flow and, and the balance sheet and income statement. I'm like, I, I, it was so overwhelming. I'm like, all I want to do is log into my bank account and see how I'm doing, bro. Um, <laughs> don't tase me, bro. <laughs> and that I, I, that I had to figure out a system for that. With 
with my business, I just noticed this constant recurring frustration. And it's not just for me, it's for so many entrepreneurs I talk with of there's always something that seems urgent. Like why can't I find the one thing? So I developed a system to navigate it. So the interesting thing about being an author, I'm, I also own some businesses is, um, when I write the books, I can solve my own problems. And secondly, it's the ultimate accountability. Like when people talk to me, go, oh, how's, how's profit first going in your business? <laughs> Pretty good. And I, if I don't do it, I'm a charlatan. So I wrote another book called Clockwork about business efficiency. Uh, it's been a, a magnificent impact on my business um, in so many ways. And I have to live by it because when I run into people virtually or in person, it's like, are you living it? So Fix It's Next is a compass. And it's based upon a lot of the work I do is based upon behavioral psychology. It's an understanding um, of how we naturally behave and then channeling that natural behavior to achieve the outcomes we want. Mm. Yeah. And that's what I loved about, you know, Profit First. I'm excited about this book. You know, as a wedding filmmaker, you know, I'm picturing someone out there right now, like running at the gym, thinking about their business, COVID hit, like the crap has hit the fan. Yeah. Life is like what, it, you know, people are canceling weddings and they don't know oh, what's yeah. going to happen. But what's happened that we've seen, especially in, in most of the, the country is weddings next year are going to be crazy. They're, we're going to have so many weddings because everybody pushed their weddings from this year to next year. And so getting ready for that and like you're going to like next year, we're just all kind of buckling down thinking we're going to have a really busy year next year. Like we're, we're cramming two years into one. And so something like like this as a small business owner that runs the books and run, I mean, I'm the guy solopreneur, you know, it's just me. I come in, I check my emails, I do the you know, and I do I, I assign the fire of the day to take care of. And so what advice would you have to somebody out there that is a wedding filmmaker, maybe that's in this craziness? It might not be really busy right now. What should they be doing now to prepare for that inevitable storm? Yeah. Well, I think you, first is to realize we have a choice. Like, why not the inevitable storm happen like today, if that's what you so desire? It's interesting how we humans become very compliant with our beliefs. It's called a confirmation bias. So if I say I suck at math, prove myself to be right by, look how horrible I am by not studying. If I say the, the storm's coming two years from now, I better get ready for it, or the you know storm has an opportunity um, that also says nothing's gonna happen now. But I do say, well, I, I do think we have the right to say, I expect right now to be the biggest opportunity. And I think what happens is subconsciously, our mind starts ticking away at it. So I'll give you a practical example, because that's far better. I actually worked with wedding planners, so a derivative of the work that you do. Mm -hmm. And um, I was talking to wedding planners and they said, oh, you know, weddings are gone, they're over, we're screwed. And I said, well, what if, what if this was our busiest season? What, what could we do? And uh, one wedding planner said, well, I guess these couples that are putting off their weddings um, maybe still want to do it and we could do a virtualization of it. What they did is they came up with these, they called them wedding packs, where you did a virtual wedding, um, but all the attendees, the 100 or 150 people that are coming to the event, all got a package in the mail prior to the wedding. And in there, there was mini boxes with different numbers on one, two, three, four. One of them had a champagne flute and a bottle of champagne. One had rice and, or confetti to throw in the air. And as they're running the virtual wedding experience, they have the guests opening these boxes and doing the event. It was wild. And this, this wedding planner now has a reputation uh, for this virtualization of weddings. You don't have to put your wedding off is what the message became where every other wedding planner is like, well, wait until it opens up again. Big opportunity. Mm -hmm. As a, uh, a video uh, producer for weddings, why not do that? We can call it the journey too. And I'm just riffing here, but why aren't we reaching out to couples saying, listen, you're deferring your wedding, but you're not deferring your life. We need to document this. Mm -hmm. Why not record this journey? This is the most uh, significant shift in, in human life in over a hundred years. Like this is, so wild what we're going through. Don't you want this part of your journey? Don't you want your children and grandchildren to see this to what you went through? Start documenting it. And now it becomes less about a day. It becomes about a journey. I, I think we have a right to make that choice. Um, but if we go in with this, this kind of preconceived belief that the future is where the opportunity is, we're going to prove that right now is where the opportunity is not. Mm-hmm. 
What would you take on if you had an extra set of hands? What would you do with your free time if you didn't have to edit? So many of us get bogged down in the post-production hustle that we never seem time to focus on our business. John and I both felt that way until we found Weditor. Weditor is a post-production team of top wedding film editors and project managers that give your films and brand the extra eyes, ears, and hands that they need. Not only is Weditor delivering films we love to our couples faster, but we can invest ourselves fully in other areas of our business knowing that Weditor has our back. Be the first to know how your second shooters are doing, how those new LUTs work with your footage, and relax knowing your couples are getting the full attention they deserve on every single project. So what could you do with an extra hand? Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor, whether you're ready to start now or preparing for next season. Be sure to use promo code HTFW for $50 off your first project. If you're interested in this service, make sure you head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash Weditor soon. Fall 2020 spots are lined up and filling up fast. Weditor, more than freelance, more than outsourcing. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's really good. I think that so many, so many people, you know, are stuck in like right now and like worried about, you know, this moment right here rather than yeah. looking in the future, looking at the opportunity, you know, um, how, how can I, okay, um, life's giving me lemons. How can I make lemonade? You know, that, that whole, that whole exactly thing, it. um, you know, you know, how do you do that? So, uh, really, really good. So as, as we're talking about, um, you know, the books that you've written and, uh, the, I'm sure you speak all over the place and, you know, give all sorts of advice, you know, I'm sure that there might be a uh, kind of a common thread among people that you talk to, you know, when it comes to maybe, uh, mistakes that they're making or, um, you know, they, the, the questions that they ask you. So what, what are some of the most common maybe mistakes or questions, you know, that, that people keep coming back to you that really service to the top that you, you know, you want other people to, to hear. Yeah, so I, I can start rattling them off. The, the first one is sales cures everything. Like the more sales I have, the better my business is. Bullshit, not true, <laughs> not even close to true. Um, yeah, there's there's some pretty pretty significant pundits that say, yeah, yeah, that's the reality. Cure, sales cures everything. No, sales translates to stress. Sales is necessary, but it alone is not sufficient. Because if you think about it, sales is an obligation now to your customer who just acquired your services. Well, the more you sell, the more customers you have, the more you have to deliver. So sales translates to more delivery requirements, which as a small business owner, which many of us are, we carry the business on our shoulders. Therefore, it's more stress on us. So the more mm -hmm. we sell, the more we worry, the more weight on the organization. It actually puts us in a more precarious position because now it's like I got to scramble. Um, so sales does not carry everything. Sales are necessary, but it must be balanced with profitability. Profit. And I, already, I say this in my book, profit's not an event. It's not something that's going to happen down the road. Profit's a habit. We have to bake it into every single transaction of our business. Another one uh, is thinking that workaholism is a uh, is a, something to be proud of and guilty as charged. I mean, I thought the longer I could work, the harder I worked, the more successful I was. Um, I actually once remember I had a call with a friend of mine. His name's John. Uh, John also, John Bates, also has a business. Uh, we called him one night. And one morning, and he said, man, I'm exhausted. I only got six hours of sleep last night. I was working like an animal. And I responded by saying, I only slept four hours last night, dude. I worked so hard. Like some kind of big D-bag, uh, proud that I'm lacking sleep. <laughs> and that was kind of a wake-up call. Like, oh, my gosh. You can't, you shouldn't carry your business on your shoulders. Here's the definition of entrepreneurship. And I'm, I'm pissed about this because it's become bastardized. Entrepreneurship is not hustle and grind. And there's people that say it's all about hustle and grind. It's not. Entrepreneurship is about vision. It's about clarity on the outcome, taking a risk and saying, I'm going to solve that situation. And then organizing resources, technology, equipment, people to make that vision a reality. We're the great organizers. In fact, the primary job of an entrepreneur is to provide jobs for people who are not entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. That's our primary job. And if we are doing the work ourselves, Technically, we're stealing jobs from people who just want to work. 7% of the world population will ever be in the position of running a business. 7% will ever be business owners. 93% are looking for good, reliable jobs. They want to work for an organization that's reliable. That's our responsibility. So workaholism ain't the cure. Um, I can go on if you, if you want. I, I love that. 
Um, I want to make a comment. At one point in my career in 2017, I had around 10 employees, was running more of a volume brand, doing all kinds of stuff, and I was stressed to the max. Like my income or my sales number was, you know, the highest it ever was. But after looking at all the numbers and after it dwindled down, and I mean, you wrote, you wrote this in your, your book, Profit First, but it was just like the leftover became, you know, for me, and I wasn't making hardly anything. And I was spending all these weekends out shooting away from my family, stressed out, not seeing my wife or my kids so I could, you know, provide a job for myself. And I, I didn't have it in order. I didn't have, and in the, at the end of 2017, I kind of had like this, I've had it moment where it was like, I was out of money. I couldn't pay anybody anymore. I had to let everybody go. And like, besides a couple of people. And that's when my life shifted. When I started like taking control of my time, starting, you know, reading books like yours and saying, I'm going to start putting money back from the beginning. I'm going to set aside profit. I'm going to pay myself first. I'm going to do and I think so many people out there think, like you said, this badge of honor, like, haha, I'm a D-bag that only slept four hours or whatever. It's like, <laughs> that is not a successful business. That is not, no. the, like, it's not the way you should go. So I'm really happy you said that. So you can keep going with more things because I'm over here taking notes. But I, I just wanted to yeah, make yeah, that point yeah. well, that if I'm you're happy out there. To relate to it. I'm happy to yeah. relate to it, John. I mean, that's, that's important. And those realizations are necessary. And sadly, sometimes we have to go through the experience of sacrificing family and life itself to awaken to the fact like, oops, maybe a business can be and should be run another way. I'll give you another one. There's a big misconception that customers buy on price. You know, they actually want to buy profit, meaning they want us to be profitable. Now, here's the deal. I strongly suspect you'll never have a customer say, hey, could you uh, double the price on me there? Uh, could you rip me off a little bit? They'll never say that. But here's what your clients will say. I want your undivided attention. I want to be this to be the best of your filmmaking ever. I want to be catered to. I want you focusing on me and no one else. And you know, the only way you can serve a client to the highest degree, the highest quality is not, is by not worrying about where the money's coming from, by not mm -hmm. worrying about that next customer. <clears throat> if you're not sustainably profitable, it's not about caring for this customer. It's about getting them off the plate so you can get someone else on your plate because we need money. Our customers want our undivided best efforts. The only way to do that is by being profitable. So while they'll never say, I want you to take more money from you, they want you to charge so that you don't get distracted. That's the key. Profitability is a responsibility. And uh, don't, don't ever, ever, ever associate profit with greed. Um, I, I hear it regularly because um, I wrote a book called Profit First. People are like, oh, this guy's a greed monger. All he cares about <laughs> money. No, I care about sustainability. And profitability brings about sustainability and it reduces stress. I've had the good fortune or misfortune of, uh, of having wealth and having absolutely no wealth, uh, being totally broke. And uh, I'll tell you, the wealthy side is a lot more comfortable than the unwealthy yeah. side. Um, Go figure. Amen, brother. Amen, brother. <laughs> right? It really is. So um, that comfort allows me to cater to my clients and to care for them. You have a responsibility to do that. I also want to argue you have a responsibility to get out of your business as soon as possible. I think many um, entrepreneurs believe that one day there's going to be this switch from working inside your business to to running the, the business running on its own. And uh, actually, there's a great book on this subject. Michael Gerber's E Myth is is considered a bible from moving in from in the business to on the business. I actually keynoted along with Michael Gerber, and uh, we were sitting. This is in Monterey, Mexico, years back, and we're sitting down having a dinner together and discuss this concept. And my perception is what I thought was one day I'll be working on my business, not in my business, that there's a switch. And when we discussed this, it really came to the conclusion, it's a throttle. The goal of the entrepreneur is when you start the business, if you are the only resource to the business, you are required to support that business. It's called sweat equity. But starting immediately, guys start peeling you out of the business like a throttle, start slowly pulling you out, getting rid of the small, minuscule, repetitive, distracting work that's necessary but a distraction, moving you to the more sophisticated stuff, ultimately removing you from the sophisticated stuff. The best part is when we're fully removed from the business and the business doesn't need us anymore, then as a business owner, we have the right, because we own the business, to reinsert ourselves in the way that gives us joy. And, and that's how mm -hmm. I do it. I finally have extracted myself from the business now fully, which doesn't mean I don't work. There's two things I love to do. I love to write books, so I write books. And I love to be a spokesperson, what we're doing right now. Those are two things I do for my business because that's what gives me joy. But the business doesn't need me 
for its operations. That's run by our team. Yeah. Are you tired of just sending a link to your couples when you are done with their film? Do you want to deliver something they can actually see and feel? something physical. We are so excited to tell you about Photo Flash Drive. Photo Flash Drive's customizable hard drive and solid state drives give your client a peace of mind. Take your delivery experience to the next level with your couples. Photo Flash Drive uses state-of-the-art Seagate drives that are 100% customizable. PFD has the ability to print your logo, your couple's names, or both on the drive. You guys, we picked up a few of these and they are so good. We cannot wait to blow our clients away with this next level physical product. Not only can you customize these drives, Photo Flash Drive offers high quality, customizable boxes that you can brand with your logo to really blow your couples away. My favorite is the rustic slide box that has our logo engraved on the cover. Having a high quality product like this is something that has been definitely lacking in my business. The custom hard drives and solid state drives with cases are a great way to sell additional items to your couple, a great way to offer a full branding experience, and a great way to leave an impression. And today we have a deal for you. Use promo code HTFW15 for 15% off all hard drives, solid state drives, and cases. Head over to howtofilmweddings.com slash photo flash drive to see all the details. Finding the perfect song for your wedding film can be so frustrating. We spend countless hours searching for the perfect song. When it comes to licensing music, Nick and I both love Musicbed. Not only do they have the best music, but their website makes it so easy to find the perfect song and to find it fast. We have both been using the Musicbed's wedding subscription for years and cannot recommend it enough. Not only are they adding new music from incredible musicians like Chapters, The Light, The Heat, and Tony Anderson all the time, they've made it incredibly easy to search their library for mood, genre, instrumentation, and even key. So what are you waiting for? Head on over to howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed and use promo code HTFW for a free month of a Musicbed wedding subscription. howtofilmweddings.com slash musicbed. I mean, that's, that's so good. That's so good. I think that that's a message that all small business owners need to hear. You know, we have this idea that only I can do yeah. this, you know, and that, and that's just, I think that's a hurdle that sadly you have to own your business for three, four five years before you can really start opening your mind. And people that get that earlier on, I think that they definitely have an advantage, you know, in their businesses. So su such a good point. One thing that I wanted to, to say is, um, so on, you know, in our Facebook group, you know, we have, you know, seven or seven or so thousand people in there, you know, filmmakers, you know, asking questions and someone will post, you know, what books are you reading or do you have any book recommends recommendations? And Profit First is one that always pops up in those recommendations. Oh, it so it, it's and, you're doing and, it, um, man. It's working. Yeah. yeah. So um, for for someone out there, because I really believe that um, that book, you know, from the money side of things is one of the best resources that small business owners can have, you know, for, for having a sustainable business. So if someone's out there listening and, and they want to, they hear us talk about that book, I know it's an older one. I know you got a newer one, you know, out right now, but what, what's kind of the, the elevator pitch of that book or what's the idea behind profit first? Because I believe that all small business owners really need to pick up this book. Thank you. Thank you. You know, yeah, if you're struggling to have profit, if you don't take a quarterly profit distribution, if, if you survive check by check, yeah, I hope Profit First will be of great service to you. That's, that's why I wrote it. Um, here's what I, I did is I studied my own struggle with profitability. Uh, and about 12 years ago, I, I had this defining moment that turned it. I, I, I was I run and sold multiple businesses, which sounds glorious and wonderful, and it is, but I never ran them profitably. I made money on the exits and I burned through the cash um, extremely fast. So I studied um, why I wasn't profitable. Now I found this interesting statistic. It was revealed by US Bank to the study in the US um, of all small business. A small business, by the way, is defined by the SBA as a company that does $25 million in annual revenue or less. That's absolutely my business. Perhaps it's you guys, perhaps it's a lot of the listeners. <laughs> Still no, no, not mine. I've grown beyond that. No, you're okay. So you're past that. Okay, so good. So you're, you're, mid, you're mid cap. We're doing but, okay. Um, yeah. yeah, good. So um, these micro business or these small businesses, US Bank identified that 83% of us are surviving check by check, which means mm -hmm. if significant money doesn't come in today, we can't cover our equipment costs or our rent or payroll 
tomorrow. So we're under constant stress. And I assume you guys started your business at least for one reason, the same reason I started my business, financial freedom. I started my business actually for two things, financial freedom and personal freedom. I want the freedom to do what I want when I want, and I don't want to ever worry about money. That's the two reasons I started my business. That's why most people start it. And I'm wondering if we start our business with the intention of not worrying about money, how come 83% of us, almost all of us fail to, to achieve the primary reason we start this? What's wrong with us? And they said, hold on, there's nothing wrong with us. The system sucks. The traditional formula for profitability says sales minus expenses equals profit. And that is bullshit. It does not. I understand mathematically it does, but <laughs> behaviorally it doesn't. It's human nature. When something comes last, it means it's insignificant. If you love your family, you say, I put my family first. You don't say, I put them last because I love them so much. If you care about your health, you don't say, you know what? Start saying I put my health last. No. What comes first gets done. What comes last is the manana syndrome. And we're told that profit comes last. And it's so pervasive in our society. It's even in our vernacular. We call profit the bottom line, the year end. <laughs> it's all things that say it's last. So in Profit First, I teach sales minus profit equals expenses. And what you simply do is the pay yourself first principle applied to business. Every time revenue comes in, you take a predetermined percentage of that money as profit, you allocate it away, you hide it from your business, and you run your business off the remainder. And you will run your business off the remainder. You will find a way. Innovation kicks in. And for the first time ever, you have a cash profit accumulating. Now, the Profit First book is more sophisticated. There's more strategies and stuff like that. But the essence is take your profit first. That's what you have to do. <clears throat> So, so good. We could sit here forever. I know you're a very busy guy. I really appreciate it. And I know that our audience really appreciates you being on. Before we wrap up today, where can people find you if they want to take this to the next level? I know you do things besides just write books. Um, not just write books, but I know you do things <laughs> on top of write, well, not, just writing books. Is, <laughs> oh, John. But anyway, how can people get in touch with you or like where's the best place to follow along or where can they take that next step with you? So uh, the, the next step is I would go to fixthisnext.com. And the reason is, is um, there's a free evaluation there where you can evaluate your business right now and it will tell you what your business needs from you. Do you have a profit problem? Um, if so, and it needs to be fixed next, do that. Do you have a sales problem? And many people think they have a sales problem when they don't, but if you do, it'll identify that. Or is it something else like efficiency? So fixthisnext.com, it's a free evaluation. All the awesome. information is there. And uh, if you if you if it serves you, there's of course we'll turn you on to other resources, all my other books, and you'll find uh, videos and conferences and stuff I'm doing too. Easy enough, love it. Thank you so much for being on. We really appreciate. Yeah, thank your you, time. Mike. We really appreciate it. John, Nick, it's been a joy talking with you guys. Thank you. You're awesome. Good to meet you. Good meeting you. Well, I hope you took notes as we were listening today. Obviously, we just scratched the surface a little bit shorter of an episode just because of his time constraints. We wanted to be respectful of him and what he had to do. He had another talk he was doing and he's traveling, you know, and doing all these things and talking and like, it's crazy to me, Nick, that this podcast has gotten to a point where we can have somebody of his caliber on and just to be able to connect you with him if you haven't. And so, Nick, what were your main takeaways today? I... Man, I, I love what he said. And I, and I think in, in my business, you know, where I'm moving more that way, you know, the whole thing about um, I have to do everything within my business, mm -hmm. um, you know, like uh, many, many, of you know, many of you know, John and I have, have used Weditor, our sponsor, mm -hmm. you know, for um, editing our videos. That has been a huge burden that has been removed from my plate. Uh, we both use core financial, um, you know, as, as our, our bookkeeping and our taxes and that kind of stuff. Another huge burden that has removed. And I, and I loved how he just reiterated that about, you know, that shift of working, you know, in your business to on your business and, and doing the things that bring you joy. You know, what are the things in your business that you absolutely love to do? You need to do those things. What are mm -hmm. the things that you, put off, maybe it's a 10 minute task, but what do you put off for weeks because you hate to do it so much? Um, if there's something in, in your business, and if you're running correctly, then you should be able to outsource that and get someone else to do that because people do want to work. You know, we, we want people to hire us, but other people want to be hired as well. So that was yeah. a big, that was a big takeaway. Obviously, you know, um, that resonates with me. I think I'm, do, I, cause I'm doing it, but you know, just hearing it from him was was pretty good. 
Yeah, for me, and that was a huge takeaway, and I want to talk about it just a little bit. My main thing, and it kind of goes along with this, is the, the badge of honor that is hustle and grind and just work and work and work. And I remember Gary Vaynerchuk coming out. I started reading his books like, I don't know, 10 years ago before anybody knew, you know, he was Gary V. He follows me on Twitter. That's my claim to fame because I followed him that early. We DM, you know, like he said my name several times on his live streams. I'm really cool like that. But at the beginning, especially, he's calmed way down. But it was like, you should work 19 hours a day, 20 hours a day. You should go. You should go. And like, I remember trying to do that and keep up with that. And like, I hated it. I hated my life. And, you know, 2017 was kind of that breaking point for me. And I was like, I don't like editing. I don't want to shoot more than 15 weddings, 20 weddings a year, running all these things, like all these details. It felt like what I should be doing. And I felt guilty for wanting somebody to help me edit or someone to help me run certain things. And like Nick was saying, it's like getting out of the way. I've heard so many people, mentor sessions we've had that are like, I can't let somebody do this part. I can't give that up. But they will say at the same time, I'm financially stressed and I don't have enough time. And it's like something has to give or you're not going to be successful in your business. And one of the things Mike said in the podcast about financial freedom, I don't want to worry about money and I don't want to worry about my time or what I like. Those are, those are my two main things of what wealth looks like to me. The fact that I'm about to be done with this podcast and go carpet shopping with my wife or go to lunch or whatever, like that's the ultimate freedom to me that I got to go to my daughter's meet the teacher this morning. Like that's the kind of stuff I love. I don't miss a game. I don't miss, you know, a thing I'm available for my family first. And it, like he said, putting that that thing that's most important first, put your profit first, put your family first, put your time first. If you don't set those things up in your life, you will have the manata, the manana, whatever he said, it, tomorrow is when you're going to be worrying about it. Like, and you never get to you. And so there is a phase. I mean, right, Nick, where when you're first getting going, you might have to put in extra, you know, I, I remember thinking about how to film weddings. And at the beginning, you and me, that was it. We did everything. We got going. You edited. I edited. We did it on top of our jobs. But sooner or later, we hired Blake. And Blake help, helped us to edit our podcast and do certain things. And then we got admins and moderators in our Facebook group to help make sure that you guys aren't spamming it and being trolls and stuff like that. And then it's like now we're looking for somebody to help us with administrative tasks. And as we're growing, like the thing we love to do the most, you know, we've defined, you know, like what I love to do the most is, is talk to other people and create and have ideas and, and focus on that more so than being the person to do some of the, the tasks, you know, that are involved with getting it uploaded or writing descriptions for episodes or, and so defining those things are really important and, and do this next, you know, like this is, or fix this next, like I'm excited to pick this up. We'll put a link obviously in the description for it, but I think that the practicality of, of the, these kinds of books are what everybody should have in mm -hmm. their tool belt. So I know I rambled a lot. No, no, that's good. As, as and, and that's, and that's, and I said this in the episode, but I really appreciate with his writing style, how he's like actually giving you practical, do this thing, do this thing and fix this next seems to be a practical approach of working on your business and, and figuring that stuff out. So, uh, it was great to have Mike on. We really appreciate him taking his time. He's a, he's a really busy guy. Um, so thank you all for listening to this again. What I want you to do right now is head over to fixthisnext.com. There you can check out, uh, you can take this little test that Mike has put together to figure out what you need to be working on in your business right now. Pick up his book, pick up his other books. They are helpful. They will help you uh, succeed in your business if you apply the things that he writes about in those books. So again, that's fixthisnext.com. Mike, thanks for joining us. John, it was a pleasure to hang out with you for Always. a little bit today. So good. Thank you for listening, and until next time, we will see ya. See ya.